Hello everyone, thank you for joining the talk. My name is Konstantin Taranov and today I'd like to present the work that I did at Oracle Labs on accelerating Apache Kafka with RDMA networking. But before talking this, about the system that I designed, I would like to talk about the differences between socket-based networking and RDMA networking. In the socket-based networking, the packets arrive to the network controller that simply copies them to the network driver, which is responsible for processing the packets and copying the payloads to the applications. In the case of RDMA, the RNIC has connections on the device, so it's capable of fully processing the packets on the device and then copy the content of these packets directly to the user's buffers, which would bypass the kernel and the operating system and which would have zero CPU involvement. Besides of all these advantages in the performance, RDMA also offers new operations. So besides sending and receiving the messages, Applications can also write and read remote buffers given a virtual address at the remote machine. As a result, we have hundreds of systems that took advantage of RDMA networking. And we think that it's time to use RDMA for Apache Kafka. Apache Kafka is a public subscribe system that offers the producers ability to store the records in queues in Apache Kafka and the consumers they can subscribe to these queues and fetch the records later. The problem of Apache Kafka that all the communication happens through the TCP which involves a lot of data copies in this network driver. In addition, Apache Kafka has to copy these uh, records from the receive buffers and store them into, this sto into the storage. And then when the record has to be sent, again, it involves this TCP stack. As you can see, clients can easily exhaust memory and CPU resources of Apache Kafka. What we propose, we propose to use RDMA to completely remove this excessive data copies and to reduce CPU load on Apache Kafka servers. So we offer RDMA data pass for the producers as well as the, for the consumers. In addition, Apache Kafka is capable uh, replicating the records to the remote servers. So we also implemented RDMA replication data path that would use RDMA to replicate records at low cost. First, I'd like to talk about RDMA produce data path. As I mentioned before, producers, they would write records to these queues, which are called a topic partition in Apache Kafka. So topic partition logically is a long lock, but of course, physically, it just consists of multiple files where a file can be of maximum one gigabyte by default. So each records would be uh, written to the last file and when it's become full, a new file is created for new records. What we propose, we could actually use RDMA to directly write the records to the memory mapped files to the virtual address offered by MMAP call. The problem is that RDMA doesn't offer you a PAN uh, capability. So only what you can do, you could just write to a known address. So the producer should know where it should write. In the case of exclusive producer, it's not a problem. This producer can have full control over records that, that are in the file and it could incrementally write new records into the file. For that, it would use write is immediate uh, to write the record and notify the Kafka that the new record was appended. However, we could not use this approach in the case when we have multiple producers, so we would need to synchronize between them. For that, we propose to extend uh, Kafka to have a 8-byte region for each topic partition, 
which can be used for synchronization through RDMA atomic operation. We propose to use RDMA fetch and add to win offset in the file. And then the client, after reading this offset, it can write the records to that offset. As a result, we would not have any conflicts or race conditions in the writes to the shared file. We compared implementation of our uh, RDMA data paths with original Kafka, which is called Kafka, and with also Kafka. So this is implementation of Kafka that also uses RDMA, but unlike Kafka Direct, it doesn't use native RDMA API. It actually just replaces TCP stack with an RDMA capable or RDMA optimized stack. So the client would still use um, socket API, but then internally it would try to use RDMA. As a result, you could omit TCP copies, but you would still have to use the storage copies from the network buffer to the storage buffers. As a result, our Kafka Direct offers 3x reduction light in latency compared to the original Kafka and 2x reduction compared to the also Kafka, showing that native interface offers more advantages than just replacement of the communication uh, with one library with another library. So you have to redesign the system. Also, we measured the bandwidth of the produce. On average, we were 7x faster, as well as we would, would significantly outperform this also Kafka. Then we actually try to answer the question, how much CPU load we can actually remove? For that, we deployed Kafka with just one worker thread, which would obviously become a bottleneck. And then we would load it with a lot of producers. And that situation, original Kafka could only process 200 megabytes per second. Whereas our RDMA enabled Kafka could process more than 600 megabytes per second of records, which actually shows that our implementation offers 3.3x reduction in the CPU load. It means that Kafka can spend time or the system can spend more time on other jobs rather than uh, processing the records. We all, as we mentioned before, we also use RDMA for replication data path. Um, actually, replication is a operation sim is similar to production. So we have to copy the records from the leader, which is a primary data copy, to the um, backup copies. So the leader would have exclusive access uh, to the replicas, and then it could actually just use RDMA to write it. In the original Kafka, actually, it used a, a, a bit different approach, which you could read in the paper, the whole difference, but in the RDMA case, you would just simply write the records from the leader, leader to the old replicas. We also measured the latency in that case when we have to perform freeway replication, so the leader would need to make two extra copies. And we actually measured the performance when we deployed our Kafka with just RDMA for the produced data path, only to the replication data path, and also for the cases when we would enable data paths for both uh, produce and replication. And then when we enabled both, we could offer 7x reduction in latency, and as you can see, we can only achieve it if we would enable RDMA for both data paths, as one of them would just become a bottleneck. A similar effect we saw for the bandwidth experiment, but for them, actual RDMA produced data path was more important, as in the case of TCP, it would clearly become a, a bottleneck. Overall, if you enable both of our data paths, we offer 14x uh, improvement in bandwidth. Finally, I'd like to talk about consume data path. So the consumers, this is just clients that wants to read all the records from the topic partition. So they would read all the written records to the queue, 
And the idea that we propose is just simply use RDME reads to fetch the records from this file. So we would memory map them so the clients could use RDME to fetch records from them. And this is, works fine. Consumers can do that independently without CPU involvement. But we face the problem once we reach the place of last record. So the client would ask for read access, then it would read the record, steal this latest record, but then it has to get updates about new records. So it has to get information about new appended record. Making these updates for TCP would be bottleneck by the TCP implementation. So how to efficiently get updates about new record? We actually propose to use RDMA as well. So it would be offloaded and it will not use any of the CPU of the brokers, which is extremely important for Kafka case because Kafka is written in Java and then all the processing happens in Java. So we propose to completely offload it to the network controller, to the RDMA data paths. So what we propose that consumer, they could subscribe to the uh, to the topic partition and have a special region which would contain the the latest records, the latest offsets behind the latest record in all the topic partition it subscribed to. So the Kafka would write all the latest offsets to this special memory location. And each consumer, they could subscribe to different topic partition and uh, get information about different um, updates. If we organize the memory like this, consumer can use simply one RDME read to fetch updates about all files it subscribed to. So it could just map its latest, last fetched uh, slots with the new slots and understand where new records were appended. To implement that, each topic partition would have a list of slots that has to be updated when a new record is appended. Of course, it incurs multiple writes as a new record would be written, the worker would just write this new offsets into multiple slots. But all this region is quite dense and uh, would be located in one memory location. So it's actually just low overhead compared to the cost of the update of this, uh, getting the information about new records from Kafka. Overall, for the simple case when we would just need to fetch a record, Kafka, our RDMA Kafka offers, offers 50x reduction latency. As in RDMA case, we just issue RDMA read to fetch a record, uh, which is why we think it's not even a fair experiment. What we think is better experiment is to have this end-to-end -end case. When the client would work as a producer, it would send the record, uh, to Kafka and then it would use consumer API to fetch this record. And then we would measure the whole round trip. If we would enable RDMA for both produce and consume data path, we offer almost 6x reduction latency compared to original Kafka. And as you could see, we could offer this reduction only if we use RDMA for both for consume and produce data path. And then in case of end-to-end -end latency, it also involves the operation of fetching the update. So the consumer would need to fetch the uh, information, the update, and then fetch the record, which just shows this is the, the most difficult case for our system. And we still can offer almost seven, six X reduction. For the bandwidth case for the consume, we offer on average nine X increase in the bandwidth, which is also better than all existing implementation of Kafka. Finally, I would like to invite you uh, to download the source code from the link. If you have any further question, please send them through the email you can see on the screen. Thank you for your attention.